Okay, yes, thank you. Um, so this talk will be about, uh, yeah, GeoHealth Check, uh, a quality of service monitor for geospatial web services. That's a whole mouthful. And I will be doing the first part and then Tom will, uh, will take over. Um, so, yeah, we have an agenda, but I will just start from here. Let's say we have what we call OGC, OWS monitoring challenges. And I should make it me even more broader when you have any kind of geospatial web service, you have monitoring challenges, believe me. That's actually how I joined the project. So, um, at some point your customer may call and say, uh, I see pink tiles. Uh, what would it be? Vedo piastrella rosa. Something like that. <laughs> see? Or I see a rosa kachel. Um, probably many of you have seen this. Um, let's see if we can get this down, down. This is what we expect. Like, uh, let's say it's an open layers application with tiles. But this is actually what we see. Has anyone seen this? <coughs> yeah. Never. Uh, never. Oh, <laughs> good. But you all have um, very quality web services. It happens a lot. But the point is here, um, it's not that open layers is just, or the server is bringing in pink tiles. It's uh, yeah, a reaction because your uh, JavaScript uh, web application has received a well-formed exception report, and it doesn't know what to do with it. Um, or it could be even an in image error message. And my point here is, or you could have an empty database, an empty table. Let's say a table is filled every night and it fails, and you get a beautiful um, white image. Probably you do some monitoring, like HTTP monitoring. But even if you get the exception report, you could get, let's say, a 200 answer is called, which is means, um, well, service is working. It goes further. Um, in OWS, um, there is something called get capabilities, and uh, it's, it's the metadata of the service you've, uh, from the endpoint. But I've seen many implementations where the, the capabilities document is even a static file. So there's no guarantee that specific requests will work even if you get a valid capabilities file. Um, and if you're familiar with OWS uh, services like GetMap, GetFeature, you have a 200 layer uh, WMS. How would you know that layer 173 is failing? I'm, I'm just presenting some challenges here. Uh, which goes further if you have time-based services like um, uh, sensor web enablements, like the SOS or Sensor Things API. Um, you have a fewer, but you also have, let's say, at some point you see a, a gaps in the in the data. So something may be failing in the whole um, pipeline, which also means you need some kind of history capture, not just uh, service up or down, but maybe something happened. Um, so there's public uptime services like Uptime Robot, Pingdom. Um, there's generic HTTP checking. Maybe you can add some keywords. But if you have OWS and uh, also the modern uh, OTC API service or any service, even ESRI services, you need deeper inspection. And also many of these uh, uptime services are public. And you, you may have your services running in an intranet, so they cannot even be accessed by a monitor from outside. So the value proposition is we need OWS aware web monitoring services. We need quality of service checking, uh, more formally called, and, and history capture. And of course, we have an answer to that. Um, so Tom has started the GeoHealth Check project, uh, I think already around 2014. And I give a quick tour of the UI, and later we explain how it all works. So yeah, Tom started on, on his way to Phosphor-G Portland. Um, and I joined the project later, and it's a 
GeoPython project. And there's a page uh, with, with several of these uh, Python projects. Um, I give a short tour. We start, um, there's a dashboard, it's a web application, and um, yeah, we can improve somewhat on, 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 the, on the graphics, but, but the idea is you have a dashboard and there you see all your um, yeah, resor resources, that's the terminology we use, basically a resource is an uh, OWS endpoint. And you can see um, for each of the endpoints, uh, with percentage is uh, up or, well, succeeding because it's not just up or down. There's, there's several um, tests and um, ones that are uh, failing at the moment. And what we see here are uh, CSW um, services, but uh, let's see if we can scroll down. It's like a game. Um, here we see WMS and... and and we, I, we also have, let's say, history captured. So you can see over time um, when a service has failed and you can even inspect how it has failed. So how do you operate this? Um, you can have a user registration enabled or you can, have, uh, or you can disable that. And, but basically, to add resources, you need to, to log in and... Um, then basically the first thing is you choose from uh, which kind of service you want to inspect. And there's now, this is even an old slide, but there's now like 20 services that we support because each of these services is supported through a plugin. And so it's an extensible plugin system. Um, so you say, well, I, I, I want to add a resource, as we call it. And a resource has an endpoint. In this case, it's a WMS. And you don't have to enter the capabilities file, just the link to the endpoint. And you can give it tags, but that's optional. Let's go down. And when you enter the endpoint, you immediately get into the editor. And uh, there you uh, add what we call uh, probes. A probe is basically um, a series of, uh, well, in the end, it is a series of requests that you fire on the endpoint. And later on, you will check the results. And the first probe, every, every probe, uh, it's also an extensible system. There's here, let's say, a get capabilities probe. Um, and there's dependent on the uh, type of endpoint. So this is, a, this is WMS. Uh, there's further probes available. We'll see them shortly. And you can edit uh, the probe. And uh, here there's not so much to edit. You can add, uh, enter the version maybe. And, and a probe also has uh, one or more checks. And each check um, is basically inspection of the response. So to get capabilities in this case, there's a check. Is it valid XML? If it's not valid XML, it's uh, already flagged um, failed. Uh, is the, the response, does it contain an OWS exception, or um, it should at least contain a title. And if all that's good, then, then the, the, this probe has succeeded. But there's also probes for inspecting uh, all the layers. So for instance, you can have a probe for a single layer, and there's some intelligence here that it requests all the layers, and then you can choose which layer and set some parameters, but you can even, I don't know if it's in the next slide, oh yeah, you can have here all 70 layers, for instance. Oh, right. So that's, um, let's see, go. So if something fails, what happens? Usually you get, a, you can program that you get an email and uh, from there you can inspect what has gone wrong. Uh, so you get the email that something has failed and then you can go with the link to the specific resource. And uh, you can see this has failed over time. This is an uh, ISRIC endpoint, I see. And uh, there you can find out that finally it's some ECW um, raster file which is maybe not readable or missing. And um, 
if it's fixed, you can get uh, you get the message back again, and uh, that that uh, the, the service is running again. That's that's in a nutshell how it how it uh, operates. And you'll probably be very curious how does this work under the hood. And that's what Tom. Will. Great, thanks, Juice. Um, let's figure this out here. So how's this all put together? Um, <clears throat> basically, when uh, when we when we develop GeoHealth Check and as we develop GeoHealth Check, we have a number of different parts. So one is the uh, the, the web application or the dashboard that is the user uh, the user interface, and that is used. Uh, we're using Flask as well as uh, Bootstrap for some of the uh, the UI things. Then there's a, a health check runner. Those are the act that's the actual machinery that's doing these health checks in in the background. The user interface is showing the results of all the health checks that happen uh, that happen over time, sort of offline, to inspect the uh, the quality of service that that uh, that your services are, are performing at. And we also have a database. It's interesting to mention that um, in the default geo health check setup, uh, we do give you a, a database. I think it's uh, PostgreSQL, at least in the Docker setup, but we do support uh, uh, different types of databases. So you may already have a database in your environment and you simply want to reuse that database for your GeoHealth check requirements. So that is possible um, just the same. So yeah, just to visualize that, we have the uh, the runner, which uh, is basically storing results into the database, and then the web application is basically displaying them. So pretty, uh, pretty simple architecture. Simple's good. Um, and as I mentioned, we uh, we have a Flask web application. You can configure uh, configure your checks and configure all of your uh, services in the user in the user application. We also have some machinery in behind for you to sort of pre-populate um, uh, services that you want to monitor if you have sort of an automated workflow or you can just use the default user interface. There's an admin user that comes with the application and then you can manage users uh, for, uh, for, for different services and, uh, and so on. The runner, again, it's driven by a scheduler uh, and it can run with different frequencies for different, uh, for different services and it provides, uh, the machinery provides all these reports so you can you know, build out these graphs that you showed uh, in, the, uh, in the tour in the overview. We also have webhooks and notifications. So as you mentioned, this is extensible and our default sort of notification system is, is through email, um, but you can also set it up to maybe Post, uh, post information to other, other services. So it's all very extensible, and we do support some defaults out of the box, which is uh, emails, for example. The basic model is that we have a resource, and uh, a resource um, is, is registered to GeoHealth Check, and it goes under, an, uh, it gets put through a number of probes. And the probes are the things that do the actual testing. So the deeper testing that Juice was talking about that are required when you uh, interrogate um, OGC uh, web services or, or OGC API uh, services increasingly. And I should mention that we are supporting both the first generation and increasingly the OGC API uh, specifications for doing, uh, for doing health checking. And each probe it, in and of itself has a check which uh, analyzes the response content and, and gets, into the, gets into the details with regards to how to, uh, how to figure out whether something is actually working. This is, getting a, this is getting a little easier with the next generation of OGC API services, which are doing um, more native HTTP responses instead of getting a 200 response and having to go inside and do all the, uh, the digging for what the response actually means. So um, this should get a little bit easier over time. And we have a plugin mechanism. So you can develop your own plugins, you can hook them up to the UI and, uh, and so on. So for example, in one project that I'm working on with uh, WMO, which, we're, which uh, we're presenting tomorrow morning called WIS2 in a Box, we're building out a MQTT plugin for uh, PubSub uh, health checking. And the database has multiple uh, entities. I won't get into details here because we do not, don't have too many uh, uh, too much time left. That's a basic uh, overview of our data model. I'll turn it over to Juice in the interest of time to close us out. <laughs> okay. Okay, the installation. Um, well, it's a standard Python installation, but uh, what we recommend is using Docker. We have ready Docker images on uh, Docker Hub. And uh, even, I think we have Docker Compose files. And there's some settings that you can do, and you can also pass these as Docker uh, variables. 
Um, like, uh, like we said, you can extend uh, uh, GeoHealthCheck with, with own plugins, and I don't have the time to go in much detail, but it's um, fairly simple. Basically, you can have two types. There's a template type where you have pre-registered um, re requests with only parameters that you need to fill in, or there's free form. You can do anything. That's what you probably need with MQ MQTT. Um, there was even some code here, but um, in the interest of time, this is the simplest plugin that, that you could write. Just HTTP request. This is all the lines you would need, and, and also for the check. Uh, let's say you want to check if there's a f in the 4 or 500 range. Um, so it's, it's quite easy to write probes. And for the sake of time, uh, the roadmap. And one of the, I think, premier things where we're Planning ahead, there's already a specification on our wiki is to have REST uh, API architecture. So means you won't ha have to use the UI, but many many um, uh, companies have an uh, automated system, so they want to let's say automatically um, populate uh, GeoHealthCheck database. And and as you may notice, the, the UI is also ready for renewal. So. Any VUES programmers here or join us. Um, and integration with various other tools. Um, yeah, this is also an invitation to, to join our project. Um, oh, yeah, shameless plug. If you don't want to install GeoHealthCheck yourself, there's also a hosted version uh, provided with, uh, with a small subscription fee, so you don't have the hassle of upgrading and maintaining an instance yourself. We have some links. This entire presentation is online. You can also find it through my website or easiestuhealthcheck.org. And on behalf of Tom and I, and, and even Hannes Reuter is here, we thank you. <laughs>